President Obama is not looking well these days. Perhaps he's getting old, getting a little too worn down for the job. He's on edge, defensive, and his self-deprecating humor has some people wondering whether or not he's actually joking. In brief, the nut has cracked. Anyone who has taken notice of Obama's behavior over just the past week will recognize that fact. The President of the United States has lost control of himself. Just take the prime example of Obama's response to being heckled last Thursday at a small 200-person campaign fundraiser in San Francisco, where tickets cost attendees $35,800 a head. Suddenly, as the president was in the middle of his remarks, a woman stood up to interrupt him, announcing that she had prepared a song. The president tried to encourage her to hold off, but she said she had just contributed $5,000 to his campaign. She then stripped off her jacket to reveal a free Bradley Manning t-shirt, and along with nine others at her table, who had paid for tickets to the event, began singing to the president, it takes a lot of Benjamins to run a campaign, I paid my dues, where's our change? Following the serenade, Obama turned to Nancy Pelosi and asked audibly, Nancy, did you do this? He then made a poor attempt to recompose himself and enraged, managed to choke out, that was a nice song, continuing, over the last two and a half years, change turned out to be tougher than we expected. However, other reports indicate that the president's harassment of the minority leader didn't stop with the simple accusation which was overheard by attendees. Like Emperor Nero or Hitler in their own time, Obama's paranoia led him to believe there was a traitor in his house. And Pelosi's opposition to Obama's own backstabbing budget agreement with Republicans was enough evidence for the poor psychopath to cause his outburst accusing Pelosi of sabotaging the event. Of course, that was just one event. Perhaps his collar was overstarched or his head wasn't put on straight that morning. But again, at a fundraiser in Culver City that same day, Obama let loose. I know there are times when some of you felt frustrated because we haven't gotten everything we wanted to get done right away. I know you are. I know the conversation you've been having. Oh, I don't know. I don't like that compromise with the Republicans. I don't know that health care thing. Why did it take so long? I don't know. Obama, he's older now. He used to look so fresh and exciting. I still have that poster, but I don't know. Perhaps some of these things come off as a strained joke, but given the president's pathology, which should be readily recognized by anyone familiar with the fourth section of the 25th Amendment, you do have to ask where really is the line between the joke and the seriousness of Obama's condition. Take his speech to another West Coast fundraiser following a town hall meeting at Facebook. I was happy to find out that my Facebook page was doing pretty well. I've got 19 million friends, which only puts me half a million friends behind SpongeBob SquarePants. So that's something to aspire to. Keep up with SpongeBob. This is the very character that Lyndon LaRouche identified in his April 11, 2009 webcast. Obama's paranoia, his fear and rage at not being loved, is built into his character, and he acts on that. His presidency, his policies, his entire personality is based on that psychosis. There's no higher consideration for the country of presidential responsibility or duty, no consideration of how his actions, driven by this psychosis, impact the lives of other people. There's nothing. And just to make the point a little personal, the fact that he was rejected by his father doesn't seem to be helping things. But can you really blame his father? I mean, given Obama's mother's track record, and I do mean getting around, Obama's dreams are probably not even of his biological father. In all likelihood, Mr. President probably adopted the name of one of his mother's one-night stands. Which brings us 
to Barack Obama Jr.'s most recent outburst, the birth certificate. Now, normally, uh, I would not comment on something like this uh, because obviously there's a lot of stuff swirling in the press at any given day, and uh, you know I've got other things to do. But two weeks ago, when the Republican uh, House had put forward a budget that will have huge consequences potentially to the country. And when I gave a speech about my budget and how I felt that we needed to invest uh, in education and infrastructure and uh, making sure that we had a strong uh, safety net for our seniors, uh, even as we were closing the deficit, during that entire week, the, the dominant news story wasn't about these huge monumental choices that we're going to have to make as a nation. It was about my birth certificate. And that was true on most of the news outlets that were represented here. We do not have time for this kind of silliness. We got better stuff to do. I've got better stuff to do. We got big problems to solve. And I'm confident we can solve them, but we're going to have to focus on them. Not on this. Thanks very much, everybody. Now, this reaction with the birth certificate and calling a press conference early Wednesday morning does raise an interesting question. Was Obama put up to releasing his birth certificate, or did he do this on his own, as a flight-forward continuation of this week's already record-breaking insanity? That question needs to be answered, and it should be answered by those who are close enough to him to invoke Section 4 of the 25th Amendment. Obama said it himself, the silliness has to stop. The nation is in a double-edged crisis with the disintegration of the financial system on one side and the threat of seismic and other disasters which are pre we are presently unprepared to respond to on the other. Glass-Steagall, which is the only thing that can save the nation on both of those fronts, is now a bill sitting in front of the Congress, and Obama is prepared to veto it. He's ready to veto the only measure that will save the United States. That's a bottom line. We're in an unparalleled crisis. Obama is not functionally able to deal with it, so he must be dismissed. Perhaps he can use his dismissal to finally take that trip to Cuba to search for his biological father. The DNA test can be released on The Oprah Winfrey Show, and it'll make fantastic daytime television. Michelle can be there too. But Mr. President, get your things together and go. The silliness has to stop. We have important business to take care of. <laughs>